In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this modern sleek makeup vanity. And I have a set of plans down in the video description if you want to check those out. Now what's in this makeup vanity is you have two compartments on each side. In the middle you have this makeup area with this makeup vanity, four lights and also a dimmable light switch to control the light brightness. And for this project I use poplar plywood and laminated pine. And to speed up the process I pre-cut all pieces for this project and now it's time to sand it down and get it prepped up for assembly. I made one pass through with 120 grit sandpaper and then I came back with 220 grit. Although I will come back and re-sand this after everything is assembled. Pre-sanding now really helps especially when you get to a later stage in the project and you have locations that are pretty difficult to get to. I'm going to start by placing the bottom down on the work table. Then take the two sides and sit those in place. You're going to next want to get the back and put that in place as well. And if everything looks good, we can now move on to gluing and nailing. The glue is the main strength of the joint. The nail is just to hold it together and allow enough time for the glue to dry. I attach the side to the back first, then I check for squaring, then I can move on to nailing it from the bottom. I find it easier to work my way from one side to the opposite side, leaving one side loose so I can adjust it as I'm going along. Now install the opposite side and then check for squaring. And now that the front is attached, I can now move on to adding the inside walls. Now you'll want to make sure to check for squaring and that everything lines up. And I'll duplicate the same thing on the opposite side. I used a 12 inch speed square as a guide to help me as I was nailing from the bottom. You can do the same thing by just drawing out a line. Now since I've made holes with the nail gun, I'm going to use wood filler to fill in the nail heads and also the wood joints. And this is what the vanity mirror should look like once it's all assembled. And I'm going to use the pocket hole jig to make a few holes for a selective location and this will allow me to hide them. Even though I added pocket holes to the end of this piece of wood, I decided not to use them because I was too concerned about the wood splitting once I drive screws in through them. And because of my concern, I used wood glue and also the nail gun. Now you can totally go with dowels in this situation, or you can go with screws and then fill the heads in. Now I placed the light fixture cover in between so I can use that as a spacer while I attach the inner trim. And to attach this piece, I'm going to use the pocket holes that I previously drilled. Now you can also use the nail gun as well. I was just hoping to cut back on the amount of nails that I put in this project and I didn't want to fill as many holes. Now after nailing on the opposite side, I'll move on to drilling a quarter inch hole at the lower bottom of the frame. Now this hole is for passing the electrical from one side to the other. Next, I'll clamp the inner trim for the opposite side and then drill through just to mark the other piece of wood. Once I've marked that, then I'll go ahead and drill it all the way through. Then I can attach that in its place. For the light fixtures, I'm going to be using some plastic keyless lamp holders. Next, I'll spread these apart as far as I can, then I'll trace them out onto the piece of lumber. And the next thing we need to do is find the center of the circles that were just created. And I'm going to do it the easy way by taking a speed square, place it in each corner, and draw out a straight line. Once the lines cross, that's your center. Now repeat the same process for the other circle as well. The next thing I'm going to do is take it over to the drill press, sandwich the two together, drill through one, mark the other, then I drill each individual one all the way through. Now keep in mind you do not have to use the drill press for this process, you can totally use the drill as well. Now I'm going to do a test fit just to see how everything lines up. Now it is a tight fit and I'm happy with that, but the problem is the bulb is touching the wood and we do not want that. So I'm going to give you a couple options what you can do to solve this problem. So this is just a test piece here. What I'm going to do is just show you that you can take a larger bit, take out some from the back. Don't go all the way through, just drill all the way through with the small bit, the one that's going to use for the final size. Now we can take a chisel and remove the excess. Once you do that, then you should be able to push the fixture up into the piece of wood much further. And at this point, you can now get the lamp holder to sit nice and flush with the top of the wood. 
So this is the option I would recommend if you don't own a router and you still want to get this done. Now as you can see, still a nice finish and acceptable. But for this project, I'm going to use a chamfer bit on the router and that would take off an inner lip of it and just give it a much more nice look to it. So now I'll do that on both sides of each pieces. Now I happen to like this option a bit better than the first option I showed you, but this is all based on preference so you do whichever one you like the best. And now at this point I'm going to start assembling the vanity door slash mirror. So the first thing I did here was I mitered the corners because I just wanted a clean look to it. Now you can totally just do butt joints here but I felt like the 4 to 5 corner would just come off as a bit cleaner. And to join the two together I'm going to use a square and also I'm going to use a glue and nail gun and this should provide a tight joint. The next thing I'm going to do is glue up the frame that we built early on in the video. Then I'm going to just flip it upside down and attach it to the inside of the door. Just make sure that the pass through hole for the electrical wire is closest to the wood. And to secure this frame in place I'm going to use a few pocket hole screws where we pre drill the pocket holes and we're going to also use a few nails from the opposite side. Next I'm going to take some scrap wood and place that inside the opening. This is where the mirror sit but we need to raise the mirror because we have holes going from one side to the other side and if you recall the holes are to pass the electric from the left to the right. Just simply add wood glue and nail them in place. Now the very next thing we need to do is wire up these plastic lamp holders. But first we have to create a notch in the side so we can allow the wire to come in and out. And to create that notch I'm going to use a mini hacksaw but just keep in mind that the plastic they're hard so they break really easy. Just to give you an idea, here's what it should look like. The wire should pass through without interfering with sitting flat. Now to clean out the notch just take a hand file and just file out the opening. Now as you can see one of these got away from me and I took off more than I wanted to. It's not a big deal but it's something to keep an eye out for. The first thing I'm going to do is connect the neutral and to identify the neutral you're always going to find a silver screw and you always want to connect the white wire to the silver screw. The next thing I'm going to connect is the black wire and the black wire is the hot leg coming in and the way to identify that is just look at the color of the screw as well and these are always gold plated. Now since the housing is plastic there is no ground that's attached to this but if it was metal of any sort it would have a ground that you connect to it. Now I added electrical tape to provide separation from the screw touching the wood and you can also use a piece of rubber or a piece of plastic which is non-conductive and you can now secure the fixture in place. And now I'm going to attach the cover but I'm not going to glue this piece I'm just going to take the nail gun shoot a few nails in each side and this should be enough to hold that in place. Now pass the wire into the other bay and I'll take some cable clips and secure the wire in place. To clarify the electrical wire is just daisy chain from one fixture to the other fixture. Now once I get to the last fixture I'm going to switch the cable that I'm using. I'm going to cut a piece off of a lamp cable that I had on hand because this one looks a little bit better. Now of course if you had a different kind of cable or you wanted to find something much nicer you can totally do that. But what I did was I tied a knot in it so that it couldn't intentionally be pulled out. And that's what I used to bring out the electrical feed down to the bottom. And after everything is screwed into place I can now cover this section up, shoot a few nails in it and this part is done. Now the next thing I want to do is install my hardwares. I like doing this prior to the finish because if I make a mistake I can always touch it up or fix it before moving on. So one of the biggest thing I'm looking for here once I attach everything is I want to make sure that the doors doesn't interfere with each other when they swing up and down. Now I also want to make sure that there's enough space in between each door panels and once we add finish on them what's going to happen is going to shrink the space in between them and then things are going to rub and that's not really what we want. These European hinges are very nice and they give you a ton of flexibility. Now since the vanity will have a receptacle and also a light switch we need somewhere to put all the junction box and all the electrical so that's what I'm making here is a enclosure that house all that. Now to make this it's pretty simple just took a piece of wood that was cut to a specific size and then attached the two side, the front and also a divider in the middle. Now I also drilled a hole in the top right corner and this is to pass the wire through for the light fixtures. And to wrap this up I'm going to fill in the nail heads and also the joint with wood filler. Now at this stage I'm going to do the last pass through with the sander and this is mainly to remove the wood filler that was added over all the nail heads. And you'll want to make sure that you're in good light for the final prep because if you don't remove all the wood filler and have different layers it's going to really stick out when you apply paint. 
And when it comes down to finishing your piece, you can do whatever you want, whether it's paint, stain, it doesn't matter. But in this case, I'm gonna use a sprayer because it's gonna speed things up a bit, but you can totally use a roller or a brush as well. I applied one coat of primer and two coat of interior exterior semi-gloss white paint. Now one thing I didn't want to do here was change the color of the vanity door too much. So I'm going to use a clear coat polycrylic. You can get this in two forms, in a spray bottle or in a container. Now I prefer the container because I think it goes on a lot thicker if you apply it with a roller or a brush. And I also put three coat of that on this as well. To install the mirror, I'll be using Mirror Mastic. It's pretty simple to install. I'm just going to apply that to the back section here and then stick the mirror in place. Now I did make the opening a little tighter than I actually wanted it to, but I was still able to make it work. Just needed a little pressure and some force and that way I can get it down in there while trying to be careful not to break the mirror or cut myself. Now if you wanted ways to keep the cost down, you can probably make your own legs, but for this project, I'm gonna be using some hairpin legs. Really stable, really strong legs that you can use for this project, and I have links to these down in the video description. These legs are a breeze to install. As long as you just line them up, mark your screw holes, take a drill bit and just pre-drill the holes, and you can then come back and just install the screws and you're pretty much done. And with all the legs installed, it's time to install the hardware and all the things are starting to come together. This is my favorite part of all my projects. And this is where you want to fine tune all your hinges to make all the necessary adjustments. The next thing I'll do is install some of these rubber bumpers just to prevent anything from sticking to each other. And I'll do this on each door, just one on each corner. And the next thing to install is these square bar pull handles. Really like the style of these. Just love the way they look. Since this is the location I'm gonna set up for my junction box where I'm gonna make all my wiring connection, I'm gonna drill a hole here so I can pass the electrical wire through. Next, secure it with a cable stapler and attach a zip tie to it just so it doesn't move. My initial intention was to secure this enclosure with pocket hole screws, but because I couldn't get that angle, I just switched it up and used some corner brackets, which worked out just fine. Install the junction box, and then it's on to wiring up the outlet and also wiring up the switch. Now I excluded the step-by-step -step hookup here because I didn't want to complicate things. To be honest, I'm just hooking up a outlet and a dimmer switch here, but I do have a hookup drawn within the set of plans if you want to check those out, but this is only pertaining to US connections. Now before I close everything up, I did want it to test and make sure everything worked, and it did, so now I can move on. Now if you have any concern about the door falling down, what you could do is install one of these lid support hinge and what that does is it locks the vanity in the up position. And with the final touches behind us, let's get a rundown of what was created here. A two-tone modern makeup vanity made from plywood and laminated pine with also some stylish hairpin legs making this thing stand out loud and proud, definitely bringing a nice punch to it. Along with two identical storage compartments that you can store all your belongings. And one of my favorite feature on this build is definitely these modern square handle for easy lifting. And I'm pretty sure this wouldn't be what it is without a dimmable light switch allowing you to control the brightness. But I do want to throw it out there, these bulbs do get pretty warm when they're on full blast. And one of the last features in this is the outlet that you guys can plug your blow dryer and whatever else you plug in this thing. Um, yeah, it's right there for you. But Glenn, I don't need a makeup desk. Yeah, but maybe you have a friend, significant other, a daughter, a grandma, or maybe you just feel like being nice to your neighbor. Plans down in the video description. Thanks for watching guys. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators. Make sure you subscribe and also like, comment. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram, DIY Creators 2015. See you next time.